Hey fellow Aquas, how y'all doing? Welcome. We are going to be taking a look at your month of April spring equinox towards Beltane time frame here. So getting right into it. In your meditation, I saw the image of a polar bear uh, in an icy tundra, you know, like polar bears are, are want to do. And, and I saw this image, it felt like a, a snow globe was covering this polar bear. And it felt very much like there was an emphasis on uh, personal timing, inner metronome, and moving in a way that is unique um, and best for you. You know, we are in solar eclipse season. We are in Mercury and retrograde. And I get this very distinct feeling that, because when I think about bear energy, I usually think about grizzly bears. And I think about springtime and going from the cave into a time of energy and rebirth and wands and, you know, moving forward, at least in the, you know, the Northern hemisphere. And then in the Southern hemisphere, you've got that counter energy with Mabin, which is, you know, sort of that winding down, but it is about that harvesting. And it is about like still being in that active cycle. But what I'm feeling for you guys is very, very wintry. It, it's very stillness. It feels very winter solstice. It feels like you're being called during this time when a lot of things are going to be feeling incredibly um, backwards for people and, and a little bit cattywampus, as it were. You're being called to, I keep seeing this image of the flash, right? If any of you guys are familiar with, with the flash um, from the world of DC, there, there's this, this sense of like when the flash is shown as moving really, really fast because that's his superpower, right? Is he's he's able to uh, move very, very quickly. I'm sure there's more to it than that, but you know, it's my my rudimentary understanding of the flash moves so quickly that when it's shown on camera, it almost looks like he's moving very slowly. So he's able to stop and kind of move things around and play around a bit. And there's this energy of, you know, moving so quickly that it almost looks like you're moving slowly. And that feels very much like what this time frame is for you, or it has the potential to be that for you. It feels very much like an invitation around that for you, where regardless of what's happening in your current circumstances or in the world during this time, as you know, the, the eclipse is very much about taking an opportunity to look within, looking at our belief systems. Why do we believe what we believe? Look at our operating systems. What has become habitual to us that doesn't really maybe work anymore? What system? Systems within and around us are outdated and can use an upgrade or are we willing to retire those systems in favor of something new you're really being called to, to ask yourself those questions and being willing to look at those things you know the animal energy for this time period is really beautiful because you've got the dolphin here which is a hybrid energy of ace of cups which is about those big intuitive psychic downloads it's also about that self-love as well and joy but it's also Six of Cups, which is about our relationship to the past, remembering things in a better or worse light than they actually occurred. It's really understanding our relationships to our personal histories as well, really taking some due inventory, right? I, I don't, I really don't think that there's a person alive or has ever been alive that is not in some way, shape or form affected by their past experiences. And you're really having been called to take a very special opportunity during this time to really engage with yours in a proactive, but also an objective way, which really is the superpower of the Aquarian, right? You've got raccoon energy here as well, which is really, really perfect because raccoon energy is about the masks that we wear and the ways in which we adapt ourselves so that we can fit in better or please others or, you know, make others feel more comfortable. But <clears throat> raccoon medicine is really about learning and understanding that when we don't wear the mask, we attract to us the people, places and things that are our perfect match. Right. And the amount of time that we waste, <laughs> like wearing that mask and altering ourselves, it, I really feel like that's coming into light here. And really looking at your past and even looking at your potential future and going, OK, I, I think I'm pretty good with living in my authentic energy. I don't feel like I wear a mask, but maybe let me just take another look at that and see. Let me go through the inventory here. Maybe let's reflect a little bit on it because there could be things that are hidden from my direct line of sight unless I choose to take them out and bring them out to the open and be really willing to go there and take note, right? Which leads us to you. You know, 
You're coming through as Eight of Cups, which doubled off in energy. Hello. This is really about moving away from the relationship that you have to people, places, and things, but also your own emotional core that doesn't necessarily, you know, feel like it used to, feel like you want it to. It's really being a way to make those, being willing to make those shifts, make those changes, and, and depart in a direction that actually feels more like you. You know, it's fascinating here because like I said, you know, Aquarian, and, and again, this is my completely non-biased opinion being a fellow Aquarian, but I feel like that's why we're one of the more psychic signs because we're able to stand on the earth, breathe the air, but still have access to our intuition and psychic energy, right? It's like, Water signs are quite intuitive and everything, but they're not always able to interpret what they're feeling with accuracy all of the time, right? It's, it's a little bit harder to come by because feelings and intuition, it can all be quite overwhelming. And when you mix it in with desire, then we're having a biased view of, of whatever, you know, energy or psychic hits or synchronicities that we're seeing, right? That's something that comes up a lot. Um, with clients of mine over the years is they'll see a lot of synchronicities or signs and they will, you know, assign them certain meanings that cut them off from seeing the full and, and clearer picture, right? Because when desire uh, is brought into the mix, it really can cut people off from objectivity, which, which is linked to the truth, right? I, I truly believe that. The more objectivity we allow ourselves to have, right, the more clearly we're able to discern reality, the truth. And I feel like that's really coming in for you here in terms of like your relationship to this time period. As things are spinning in reverse, as we are in this eclipse season, which, you know, has us looking inward and, and viewing those, you know, aspects of ourselves, our histories and those around us that, that maybe we've relegated to the linen closet, as it were, or the storage unit. There's really that idea of being willing to entertain those aspects, being willing to look at it directly so that we can make adjustments, right? And leave behind what wants to be left behind, which leads us to the place of challenge here. So this is really brilliant because we have the star, which is hello, our Aquarian selves with the seven of swords, which is, you know, self-sabotage. It's the ways in which we compromise our own integrity, right? When we say no to ourselves because we're saying yes to someone else or something else. You know, the star energy, yes, it is about great hope, great faith, great love, but it's also about standing in our own nakedness and our own authenticity and being willing to do that from a place of strength and confidence, knowing that it might be lonely out here standing on the rock, right? It might be a bit lonely. We might not be, you know, the, always inundated with, with as many opportunities as someone who is able to shape shift and adapt and maybe even compromise themselves and be that chameleon. But we do know that we are comfortable being in our own energy and attracting the things that are of quality over quantity, right? And that's really coming through here. You know, this also feels like this time period for us is very much about, because the Seven of Swords for me is about shedding weight, right? But I want to take this two ways. I feel like we're being called that by shedding weight, right? By looking at things that, that really being that Eight of Cups energy and looking at things and going, you know what? <laughs> Uh, this this aspect of me or this part of my past or this belief system or this relationship or this dream that maybe has, has reached an expiration date or wants to be transformed, uh, this wants to be let go of, right? So it's about shedding the weight, right? But it's also about shedding the weight so that we can shed the weight so that what's ours when we come out of this time period of ice and, and frozenness and, and where things are, you know, spinning in reverse, that we can be the flash, that it only appears it, we're moving so quickly and at such a speed and in such a way during this time where when things slow down, we're able to speed up. So it's like we're shedding the weight, the W-E-I-G-H-T, and by shedding the weight, we also shed the weight, the W-A-I-T. So shedding the W-E-I-G-H-T means that we also shed the W-A-I-T. That's what, that's what it feels like to me. And it feels very powerful. And if you think about it, what could really stand up to the power of the star? This guy doesn't have a chance. 
this is what isn't serving us. This is what is maybe uncomfortable to look at, but we as Aquarians can take this very unique moment in time, by the way, this season, and really bring it up for review and let it flow out of our water jugs. Hello. <laughs> Let it go, release it, and look at how naked she is, right? We are the naked star, right? We're shedding the weight of what we don't need, what doesn't serve us, what's holding us back, what is what is having us play small or play safe in some area or aspect of our lives. And as a result, just operating from a place of divine timing and manifestation, shedding the weight so that we can shed the weight. Now, advice. Brilliant, beautiful, excellent. <laughs> we have the lovers here, Gemini energy, which is about love-based choices, but it's also about inner and outer duality, which is beautifully mirroring a lot of what's going on here, right? By the way, we have a lot of doubles. My intention is only to pull a single card for each placement, by the way, but we have two animal energies here. We have two cards in the place of challenge. We have two cards is, is the advice here. So there is that, you know, the theme of duality uh, for this time period as well. You know, the magician for me, well, traditionally speaking, it's about empowerment and stepping into your own autonomy and, and being willing to, you know, the manifest from a place of, uh, you know, action that meets up with, you know, divine timing and all of that, being on top of your game, as it were. But for me, the magician is really about seeing the opportunities where other people don't see them right? When you think about a genius mind or someone who's a true genius, they see things differently than the rest of us, right? And our genius selves as Aquarians, right? People who chose to be born under the sign of Aquarius see things differently. We are visionaries. During this time when it's Mercury retrograde and eclipse season, doesn't it make all the sense in the world that we would transform into the flash where it looks to other people like we're quite frozen, but actually we're just moving really, really quickly. So ooh, I've, I've shivers with that. You know, it makes me think of being on the edge of a party, which is my personal favorite place to be. And that feels like what this is. It's like being on the edge of a party allows us to be in our own space and, and get our own alone time and, and do what we do, but be available to any energies or people that might arrive to the party. That is a vibe that we might want to partake in before getting our fill and then moving again to the outskirts of the party. There's really that sense of being willing to do what you need to do and what feels right for you during this time. That's being the magician. That's making love-based choices that honor you, that are saying no to something else so that you can say yes to yourself, right? But there's also this really strong sense here, and I, I really, really, really want to emphasize this, that these energies are going to have effects on people that, um, are not always going to be in alignment with having a connection to like, it's, it's not an easy energetic time necessarily, right? It's going to affect different people differently, but you do what you need to do to stay grounded and stay in your own knowing and be the flash because it, it, it might be difficult at certain points to sort of take on other people's energy, other people's fear, other people's anxiety. But if you think about it, the collective if during this time is going to be invited. Not everyone is going to accept the invitation, of course, to really open those locked doors and really shake out those skeletons in the closet and really turn back time and, and look at the parts of ourselves that, you know, maybe need some spring cleaning, as it were, some, you know, autumnal cleaning, depending on where you are, that's not going to be comfortable necessarily for everyone. So you can honor what you need during this time and take space for yourself as you need it. And be insistent on it because you're doing your own thing. You're operating in your own time and your own space in your own way. You're being the flash. You're being the polar bear, right? You are being the apex predator equivalent of this time period. So you don't have to do things the way anyone else does. You don't have to make excuses. You're at the top of the food chain for this time period if you choose to be an operate in that way. And you're being invited to do so, right? It's right here. So in your place of victory, and I love this so, so much, is the four of wands. Hello, signs, synchronicities, magic, celebration, happy home, happy family. You know, again, this really 
brings me back to you being able to see signs and synchronicities a little bit more clearly and a little bit more in the moment because you are operating as the flash, okay? You're moving so quickly that it, you appear to be moving slowly and you're able to go, oh, how about this? Here's, I'm being the magician. Here's an opportunity where someone else might not see, oh, I'm gonna actually invest in this where other people are not gonna think that's a great, okay. And it's about tapping into your personal genius and allowing yourself to really trust in what you see that others may not be privy to during this time, right? You know, as an Aquarius as well, you do have this power like the Eight of Cups to be connected to your intuition, but have it be married to that sense of objectivity, which allows you clear access to the truth and reality of things. So the fact that your victory is four of wands and you're going to be coming out of this time with a lot to celebrate, barefoot in the grass and the like, that just feels whoo, incredibly good. And I want to point out as well that this is this is four of wands, right? So there's an aspect to this that, that is tied to your soul purpose, why you do what you do, the work that you do, what really fills your heart with joy, what really supports that feeling of home for you. It's, it's really, really stunning. And this is coming up in your place of victory. Now, in your place of outcome, this is fascinating because you have nine of wands, more wands here. This really speaks of perseverance, right? This really speaks of getting to a point, standing on top of the mountain, right? Where you're able to not just see clearly, but you really understand that every step that you've taken to get where you are coming out of this time has been, you know, well-earned. You don't feel like you're operating from a place of regret or wanting to do things over. You're like, no, I, I'm not only able to give myself a lot of grace around my experiences and, and where I am, wherever I'm at in my journey, but I also have a deep appreciation for all of the effort and all of the inner work it took for me to get here. And you know this wand right here that's shorter than all the others? I am now ready and willing to leave this behind because it's part of the weight that I want to shed right? Which allows me to speed up and also manifest things in a different time than I would if I didn't go through this experience in this way as the magician, right? So it feels incredibly powerful, but it also feels like this is very much a time of transformation for you. Well, for everybody, honestly, but, but for you, you're going to come out of it different. <laughs> it's just like, but but in a very positive way, right? You're curating your own experience here. So the Rainbow Prince is your oracle, compensation, perseverance, perseverance. And this is really about understanding that if the quality of work or relationships that you bring to the table is the gold standard of what you are capable of and what you are here to do, then you will attract the clients, the relationships, the opportunities that reflect that effort and that gold standard in divine timing and in a way that feels exactly right for you, right? The perseverance as well with the, with the nine of wands as well, there really is also this sense of trusting that if you are living up to your best standard and your best level, then you're going to attract the, the you know, word of mouth, the feedback. Things are going to, to align for you in ways like this 1111 with the four of wands that are surprising and unexpected. This is the season of the plot twist, but I feel like for you, there's going to be some surprise reveals and some surprise opportunities that I just see an image of you just feeling like, oh my God, I'm so humbled by this. Oh my God, I'm just, I'm so honored by this. That's what I'm hearing. I'm very honored. I'm very humbled. I'm very, wow. And, and, and that's a beautiful, beautiful energy for me to be getting into for you because it really feels like you, it's not something that you're particularly striving for consciously. It's just something that you manifest as a result of entering into this time from a place of being the best editing system you can be and shedding any weight that, that you know, has expired. And in doing so, it just, there's room, there's room for you to attract uh, some opportunities and some potentials that, that you didn't beforehand. So it does feel like this is a working vacation <laughs> in some ways, Aquarius, but it feels incredibly positive because you're going to come out of it just in a very different place and operating on a different axis, 
Oh, I just got chills operating on a different axis. It just feels it's really, 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 really good. And again, by shedding that weight, you're able to shed the weight. It just feels incredibly, incredibly positive. <laughs> so with that being said, my beautiful fellow Aquas, thank you. Thank you so, so much for being here. I so hope that this helps and resonates. If so, please let me know in the comments below. I love hearing from you guys so much. I'm currently traveling at the moment. I am at a, uh, a hotel somewhere in America, having my American gods moment, uh, traveling around, so <laughs> I'm waiting a visa approval. And I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments. I'm excited to be back with you in a more regular way as, as my own time of transition moves through here to its natural completion. Um, so let me know how you're doing in the comments. I, I love hearing from you guys. And um, with that being said, and as always, again, just thank you so much for always being here. I, I love you guys the most. I, I, you know, make no secret of it, <laughs> my fellow Aquas. And most of all, and as always, just thank you for being you and be well until next time.